Okay, welcome everyone. So today we're doing a very fun problem called the closest pair of points. In this point, in this problem, we are given n points on the plane and we have to find the closest pair of points. Okay, this is a very, uh, very common, well-known problem. So you can easily find it in Wikipedia on the textbook. It's in section 4.7. So you, you can easily find it a lot of places. So first of all, let's quickly see the naive algorithm, the simplest algorithm that we can find. And that algorithm is simply compute all the distances and find the minimum. To find the distance, it's simply the formula x squared plus y squared square root. And that's what we do. We compare all the n square combinations and we take the minimum and that's our answer. But we are really interested in a better algorithm. But if you want to use the naive algorithm, this is what it looks like. Again, no magic here. There is two for loops for i in range, for j in range. Compute the distance, that's a map dot square root here. If it's less than the minimum distance, which is initialized to be infinity, uh, update your minimum, and that's what you have. And because in this case, there are two for loops here, this will take n square time. We don't want to really do that. We want to find a better algorithm here. So there is a big difference between n square time algorithm and n log n time algorithm, if we can find it. So in n log n time algorithm, you can easily run with 10 billion points. n square algorithm, not so much. Even if you have 10 million points or 100 million points, uh, the difference between them is already very big. And n square time algorithm will take many minutes to run it. You know, while n log n time, you wouldn't be able to really uh, observe it quickly as a human experience. And we, would, we want to use the divide and conquer approach here. The divide and con conquer approach normally begins by dividing the input into, into smaller parts here. Here we will divide this, the set of points into two equal subsets by simply taking the median of the x dimension, essentially looking at the point from left to right, the first half, the second half here. And then we will, make, we will solve this problem recursively by making a left-hand side recursion, a right-hand side recursion, and then there are two recursive calls here. So that kind of looks like, okay, first divide this problem here on the left-hand side. So that's your dividing vertical, half points on the left, half points on the right. And then you make the two recursive calls, which would take T of N by two time, considering that T of N is your overall time. And then you still have to handle the crossover scenario, such that if one points on the left-hand side, the other points on the right-hand side, how much time does that take? So that's the minimum distance, so you have to handle that scenario as well. This is kind of what it looks like. So that's the crossover case there. So you essentially have to do these three things. After you divide, the, after you, divide you make the left-hand side recursive call, right-hand side recursive call, then understand this crossover scenario, and then return the best solution that you found. That's how our algorithm would look like. So if we look at the time complexity of this algorithm, that would take t of n is equal to c n, which is the time stem, that, that's the time that's spent in the step one, that's the median finding. Now recall, the median can be found in linear time. You don't need to sort it. The linear can be found in median time. We have covered this earlier. You can find a video link floating somewhere. So that's something else that you can look into. Then you make the two recursive calls, 2t n by 2, and then the crossover scenario, which we haven't really analyzed yet. So we can say that that takes f of n time. So that's our overall recurrence relation for this problem here. Okay. Then we can do a little bit of conditional analysis. Okay. Depending upon f of n, what does the t of n look like? So we observe that if f of n is big of n square, then t of n will be big of n square as well by using master theorem, etc. So that's not really an improvement over the naive algorithm. But if f of n is linear, then the t of n will also become will also diff be different and it'll become big O of n log n. So therefore, our complication really now is to bound f of n. Our problem has changed from rather than finding the overall closest pair of points, all we want to do is 
we want to solve the crossover scenario in linear time so that f of n becomes linear and the rest the algorithm becomes n log n. So we will try to see how this can actually be done in fact. So let's understand the merge process. So first of all when we make the two recursive calls in the recursive call you already receive the closest pair of points on the left hand side let their distance be called the delta 1 so delta 1 is the answer that you get from your closest pair of points on the left similarly you receive delta 2 from your closest pair of points call on the right remember you're making those two recursive calls first now that you have those two recursive calls here you're then going to compute the minimum of delta 1 and delta 2 and this delta is sort of your best answer right now and this delta is what we are now going to use to influence our merge scenario so we observe that if there is a the delta is our best answer we're really only interested in points within the des distance delta of the dividing vertical why is that if these points here for example that are so far from the dividing vertical they cannot find a point on the other side that's less than delta distance away because they're already delta away from the median itself so that's our observation that's a key observation using which the time can actually be significantly reduced okay the next key observation we want to make is that even if you find a point p1 on the left hand side you don't want to be vertically very far from the point p1 either otherwise again the del the distance will be further than delta this is kind of what it looks like so first of all we've already eliminated all of these points on the left so we're focusing on our point p1 which is within this with within this narrow band and we're using the left hand points as sort of our driver points will match them to the points on the right hand side of course you can do either way but considering this point p1 you're only interested in the points in the green in the green shaded area you're not interested in points that far up or that far down then we make the final observation that within this green banded area here you can really only fit six points there you can't have a lot of points there because that would contradict the definition of delta ultimately delta was the minimum distance in the closest pair of points found so far so now you cannot come and say oh there are two points right over here if they are then your definition of delta would be smaller so that means the two points cannot be less than delta distance close to each other therefore if you try to put as many points in this box you can really fit only six one in each corner and two over here and that's six points so that means from the perspective of point p1 you're really really only going to find six points here and that's true for every point p1 on the left hand side so therefore even if you have all the points on the left are in in that narrow band still when you multiply that by six that means you have only three and pairs to consider therefore your f of n is actually linear and what does that do to our recurrence relation like we saw earlier t of n is equal to cn plus 2tn by 2 plus f of n now we are saying that f of n is some constant times n as well maybe a different constant not c c prime so therefore your total recurrence relation becomes t of n is equal to 2tn by 2 blakes plus big o of n which as we have seen earlier is uh, can be solved to big of n log n using master theorem or substitution method or unfolding method so that's really our conclusion that mer divide plus merge portion takes big of n time t of n is equal to 2tn by 2 plus big of n therefore closest pair of points can be solved in big of n log n time a final implementation note i want to make that when you implement this in your programming exercise you still have to implement it correctly by correctly i mean that you cannot really look at all the points p1 here that are without thinking of an order you should think about these points p1 going from top to bottom or equivalently from bottom to top 
so that you can slide this green area in the same direction. Suppose you start these points P1 from the top, then go from top to bottom and make sure that you look at this green area sort of scrolling down as well accordingly. So this is a crucial implementation detail without which you can, uh, it, your program can actually, may not necessarily be correct. Although uh, in practice, I must say that from the, if you just look at it from the first observation, which is to eliminate all of these points that are away from the narrow band, that already gives you an actually practically an end log in time algorithm. So again, so those practical, some of those implementation details aside, this is a perfectly uh, great big off n log in time algorithm for your closest pair of points here. Okay. All right. Have fun. Keep learning.